Welcome, Dave. Um, I want to just start by asking you about a bit about your background and, and the work that you do here at Edinburgh. Sure. So um, my name is Dave Ray. I'm a, a, a professor of carbon management here at Edinburgh. Um, I've worked on climate change for over 20 years now. Mm. Uh, I specialise in how greenhouse gases, the things that are responsible for um, a lot of the climate change we're seeing, how they're emitted and what we can do to reduce them uh, every, from everything from how we move about, from transport to uh, mm. the food we grow, through to forestry and how we can actually absorb some of these greenhouse gases by protecting our forests more mm -hmm. effectively. Okay, um, so on our course so far we've been interested in trying to find personal responses to some big challenges that we face, things like climate change. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that as well. Yeah, so it's, it's a subject dear to my heart mm -hmm. uh, in terms of how individuals can play a part in climate change. And it's climate change is, is often, I guess, perceived as this huge global challenge, which it is, mm -hmm. but just so big none of us can do anything by ourselves. And so a lot of my research over the years has been looking at how uh, we as individuals can actually play a part. And one of the key things to unlocking that, I think, is thinking about what climate change is. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're seeing now is climate change all over the world. It's already happening. Mm -hmm. And our projections, our, our basically understanding of how the climate will change over the 21st century is that it will get warmer mm -hmm. by something uh, between about 2 and, and, and 5 degrees centigrade. Uh, is likely over this century. And the main cause of that, as far as our scientific understanding uh, goes, mm -hmm. is our emissions of greenhouse gases, particularly carbon dioxide, which we hear a lot about. So we're emitting a lot of carbon dioxide through burning fossil fuels mainly, but also through land use change, through uh, farms expanding and cutting down trees. Mm -hmm. So if we go on like we have been doing in terms of emitting these greenhouse gases, then we'll get more warming. And as the planet warms up, then we get changes in terms of rainfall patterns. So wetter areas tend to get wetter mm -hmm. under a future climate. Drier areas get drier, uh, and everywhere tends to get warmer. Mm -hmm. So we have um, a series of impacts uh, that we're facing already in terms of climate change. Um, and the more we emit greenhouse gases, the more climate change we get. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of nub of it, and that's where you think, well, what can I do? You know the. The emissions are coming from fossil fuel burning, they're coming from big power stations. Mm -hmm. um, surely it's all down to big business and government. Mm -hmm. But then if you think about that power station and you think about what it's doing, it's, it's there to give us the electricity for mm -hmm. our homes and for the, um, the, the gadgets we're running. If you think about the oil refineries and the big petrol companies, mm -hmm. they, they are there to give us the fuel for our cars and for our houses. Um, and, for, and to power the factories which give us our iPads and our um, buckets and our watering cans and mm -hmm. the stuff we produce. The farms are there not for any other purpose really than to give us the food that we eat. Mm -hmm. So as consumers, as individuals, we, we have the power to tackle climate change mm -hmm. because the decisions we make individually and as a collective then have an impact in terms of just how many power stations we have, mm -hmm. how many farms we need. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's where it comes down to individuals actually being the crux of tackling climate change. If we think about um, what an individual can do, mm -hmm. and we think about all the sectors across our society, so transport being a p perfect example of where we've got lots of carbon dioxide emissions, a key issue for tackling climate change. A lot of these emissions are coming from private transport, from cars. Mm -hmm. So we have as individuals a choice between a big car or a small car, which can make a big difference in terms of carbon emissions. We have the choice between flying a lot or maybe choosing to use video conferencing for meetings more and holidaying closer to home and using train, uh, in, for instance. Um, in terms of a lot of our transport emissions, uh, around the city, city like lovely Edinburgh, mm -hmm. one of the issues here we have in terms of emissions is the use of public transport and how we get more people to opt into that. And partly that's about providing good transport facilities like our lovely tram, mm -hmm. um, but also us opting to use it, so that individual action. Mm -hmm. And as an individual, if you, in the UK, our carbon footprint is about 10 tonnes per person. Uh, in some countries it's much higher, in the US it's about 20 tonnes per person. Uh, in some countries like China it's about five or six. Mm -hmm. So we've all got our own footprint 
on the climate in terms of our emissions. Mm -hmm. And if we break that down into what we can do, so if we take transport, if we take what we do around our own homes in terms mm -hmm. of energy efficiency, uh, turning down the thermostat a bit, mm -hmm. uh, making use of micro-generation technologies like solar panels, mm -hmm. if, you, if you look at all the things we can do, we can cut our individual emissions by about 80% for our rich country lifestyles. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens 80% is the cut we need globally to ensure we avoid dangerous climate change. So I talked about this, this threat of, of warming getting up to three, four, maybe five degrees centigrade increase globally over the 21st century. Mm -hmm. Now, if we get into that ballpark of four or five degrees, that is really dangerous for millions of people. The, the changes in rainfall uh, mm -hmm. will affect many millions in terms of drought impacts and flood impacts. Sea level rise is a real risk as well for millions around the world in low-level areas. So that's a future which we can talk about in terms of Hollywood and, and kind of a, a climate disaster mm -hmm. if we get into that very severe amount of warming. Mm -hmm. But that isn't, that's a choice we have in terms of how much warming we're going to get. We'll get some warming, but if we get that cut in emissions of um, 70, 80% in our emissions, we will avoid that dangerous climate change. And we can do that as individuals in terms of our own actions. We mm -hmm. can also do that very powerfully through our communities, through our political representatives, our MPs mm -hmm. in this country or MSPs, uh, by making it clear that climate change is something that we want to see action on and mm -hmm. that they should help us doing that through policy, through regulation, through providing good public transport and measures which can mean our appliances are more efficient, mm -hmm. our, um, our grid, the electricity that provides us, is lower carbon in terms of making more use of renewables. So really, right across the spectrum, um, it, success in tackling climate change depends on individuals, and as individuals collectively, we, mm -hmm. you know, we will decide the future of our planet.